I need to catch you up on all my communals. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy videos like this, as well as species-specific Karen husbandry videos, make sure you hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted every time I upload new videos in the future. Now, there's a lot that's been happening down in my basement, and I just wanted to catch you guys up on everything. You know, when I started this channel, I didn't have a single communal enclosure, and now somehow I'm up to like five. Well, technically, if you count all of the other isopod colonies and things like that, two, three, four, then I'm somewhere at like 13 or 14, maybe even 15. Some of them I've been able to feature in past videos, but not all of them. And I've been getting some comments from people that just kind of want some updates on the communals that I have showcased. So I figure if I'm gonna do that, I might as well show them all to you. Some of them are tarantulas, but they also encompass all kinds of other different types of invertebrates. Now you might remember that I received a uh, communal of ghost manis in the mail from arthropod ambassadors. And I had that going for a few months, but I was starting to notice that a couple of the smaller mantids were getting eaten so I went ahead and split them up so I'd no longer have that communal. Everybody's in their own enclosure. But I do have this communal that I wanted to show you guys because I haven't been able to feature it much on the channel. Now these are my white spotted assassin bugs. Currently there are eight of them living inside this enclosure and they've grown a lot from when I originally got them. Soon they'll be at breeding age and who knows how many we'll have then. They're pretty prolific breeders so I expect to have a lot more of them in the near future. The other communal I have is very similar. These are my Horde King Assassin bugs. I've not had as much luck keeping these as I have the white spotted. Originally, I had eight of these specimens and I am down to just four or five. They seem to be a little more cannibalistic, even though I feed them all the time. So what I've done for both of these communals is I've moved them into a larger enclosure and I'm hoping that's gonna allow them to thrive. Now these are kind of like arboreal species. I rarely see them ever crawling across the ground. And kind of like a mantis, they molt hanging upside down. So I have to provide them with plenty of branches or cork bark that are leaned at angles. And they spend the majority of their time hanging out on the underside of the cork bark. But when they do come out, especially when they're feeding, they're very awesome. I really enjoy these species. Now this next communal is pretty special to me because it has the first scorpion I ever added to my collection. This was just kind of an impulse buy. I picked this species up at a reptile show in Pittsburgh. It was simply labeled bark scorpion. So I did some research and talked to some people in the Facebook group that know a lot more about scorpions than I do. And they assured me it was an Arizona Arizona bark scorpion. So I kept it for a while just by itself and I picked up a few more and learned that they were a communal species so I decided to try them out. So currently I have four Arizona bark scorpions in this enclosure and they've been doing really well. I really like seeing them kind of interact with each other and just living communally with any species that has that ability is, is much more fascinating than just seeing one of them in an enclosure. And it also saves a lot of room. Now they're not quite full grown, but they'll be there soon. And I've heard that they're quite prolific breeders. So I'm sure in the near future, we'll have plenty of babies.
Now this is one of those species that I believe is a great addition to your collection, especially if you're gonna keep scorpions. But if you live in Arizona or any of those states down there in the Southwest, they're probably more of a nuisance to you and probably not something you would ever consider put into an enclosure and keeping. But I really enjoy them and I'm sure I'll be doing some more videos on them in the near future. I started off with just one Arizona bark scorpion. Now I've got 60 scorpions. Now up next is a species that if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of pictures of lately. Probably the third or four scorpion I ever added to my collection was a Florida bark scorpion. I had enjoyed keeping the Arizona bark so much I really wanted to add a Florida bark to my collection and quickly became enamored with it. From the very beginning I had intended on setting this species up as a communal but the only place I could find them for sale only had one available at the time. So I went ahead and picked it up and kept it for a few months until I found another dealer that had multiple of them available. So I picked up a few females and a few males and currently there are five scorpions in this enclosure. The exciting thing is, is that one of the female species that I was sent was gravid. So within a few weeks of getting that species, it had babies. So I quickly separated her from the communal, had her set up in her own enclosure, and kept her there with a very close eye on her until the baby started to come off her back. Now these species are semi-arboreal. They will spend some time on the ground, but they also enjoy climbing up cork bark. So when I set up her little temporary enclosure, I just put a big hunk of cork bark I had right in the center. I didn't quite think it through very well, so when the baby started coming off her back and moving around the enclosure, finding places to hide, the piece of cork bark I had put in there was just riddled with little tunnels and holes and crevices, so all the scorplings hid in some of the most inaccessible places of that cork bark. Originally, when I started pulling those scorplings out and putting them in their own enclosure, I thought that I only had about 18 of them. But I did notice while I was using a flashlight to locate the last few of them that there was one little scorpion way down in a tunnel. So I waited a couple hours, came back later that night with the black light, and noticed that there wasn't just one scorpion, there were five more. So I separated those out, put them in their own little enclosures, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any more. So I gave it a few more hours, came back down here about three o'clock in the morning, shined the black light on the enclosure, and lo and behold, there were a few more out and about. So I quickly pulled them out and really started to inspect the cork bark very closely. And I could see that there were a few more glowing little tails and legs way deep down in the cork bark. Eventually, I pretty much had to break that one piece into about 20 pieces so that I could expose all the tunnels and crevices. So after all said and done, after I pulled all the little squirplings out of the cork bark, the official final count on those Florida bark squirpion babies is 32. I've got some exciting things planned for those squirpions. I'm gonna be giving some of them away, and but I'll tell you more about that later. That's for, that's for another video. Now, in addition to those four communals, I also have six different colonies of isopods. Originally, I was getting them for my bioactive enclosures, but I really became so enamored with how they looked, I decided that I'm just gonna keep them all individually. Now, technically, five of them are separated as separate species, and the sixth one's just kind of a mixed lot of all kinds of different isopods. That's usually the colony that I draw from to put into like the different bioactive enclosures I have. Recently, I set up my ball python bioactive and put some in there, as well as my leopard geckos. Now, if you'd like to see some videos on my leopard gecko or ball python bioactives, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know that. Now, I know they're not tarantula or invert related, but they are part of my collection, and if you wanna see them, I wanna show them to you. Now, I also have five different communal enclosures of millipedes. I have the scarlet red millipedes, the smoky oak millipedes, the Florida ivory millipedes,
the bumblebee millipedes. and the Texas gold millipedes. As far as communals go, these aren't the most exciting species because they spend a lot of the time kind of burrowed down into the dirt. But usually there's at least one or two out on the surface. And the Texas gold millipedes are probably my favorite because they're much larger, they're very inquisitive, and they spend a lot of time out in the open. All these species are fairly easy to take care of, so if you've been considering adding some to your collection, I will highly suggest that to you. Now this final communal is probably, definitely, the most popular. It's my Imbau 40 communal. Now I got these guys as spiderlings and did a rehousing video on them a few months ago. A lot of people seem to really enjoy that, so I'm just gonna give you a quick update on how they're doing. They've all molted once since the last video, and they've webbed the enclosure up like crazy. Any given time, I can usually catch one or two of them out in the open. But when it's feeding time, there's usually at least three or four. And sometimes if I come down here late at night or when the house has been quiet for a few hours, I'm even lucky enough to catch all five of them out on display. They're really starting to get some of that embalphoria adult coloration going and are rapidly approaching another molt. Been lucky enough to not have any cannibalism. They even seem to share their prey. This is an amazing species to keep communally in, and I can't wait till they're large enough to put into their final enclosure. I've got some amazing plans for that. Now I've been getting a lot of requests lately to do some species specific care and husbandry on the millipedes and the scorpions and the assassin bugs. And I feel like I've got my husbandry dialed into the point that I feel confident in sharing my experience with you. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you what I do, sharing my experience with you. More kind of just as a launching point where you can see how I do it and then go out and learn how other people do it and design your own method of husbandry. So if you you'd like to see some videos on those species, I'm gonna leave a poll up right here and just vote on which you'd like to see first. Eventually I'll get to all of them, but if you really wanna see the scorpions or the assassin bugs or the millipedes or whatever it is, let me know up there and I will get to that one first. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button. It really helps support the channel a lot. I thank you all for all your support. Huge shout out to the Patreon and YouTube members. You guys really keep me going. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise and I will see you next Tuesday. Now these are some awesome isopods.